Hello fellow modelers and styling fanatics, welcome back to my channel. I hope that everyone is doing fine and enjoys the hobby. Concrete Banker is back once again for its usual notorious episodes and updates. And today we complete, we almost complete the assembly of the Caro Armato L6-40 from Italy in 1 to 35th scale and kit number 6469. So, as I've said before, in the beginning, uh, Past George was quite busy, and he, but he managed to almost complete uh, the tank assembly, the whole tank assembly. And when I say almost, we have left a couple of steps uh, aside for the time being. The steps we have left aside, of course, is uh, dust and the final weathering, like uh, fading and stuff like that, with oil paints, which to be honest with you, I don't know if I am going to do, but dust I'm gonna do uh, for sure. Now, uh, let's see what I have done to the what Pastor George has done to the tank, and we're gonna talk from there. Finally, let's paint this sucker up. Okay, guys, welcome to part six of the Caro Armato, and today we have a rainy morning over here in Greece but we don't care because we are brass painting so humidity won't be able to change a lot of stuff apart the time that uh, the paint uh, wants to dry so uh, I'm gonna depict the three tone camo scheme because this is the one that's on the photo on the beginning and that's the vehicle we are aiming for for the ones that they want to know we're gonna do the version A the Gio Cercito 31 which is uh, which used to operate with uh, Balkan units with sorry German units in Balkans at September 1943 so I'm gonna base coat the whole thing with uh, the first camo with the first of the three uh, camo colors I'm gonna use US Desert Armor because why not for the for the base coat uh, for the guys out there that uh, use more specific colors probably now you're plucking your hair out but it is what it is. It's my it's my build. I can use whatever color I want. Anyway, so I want to use this one to see how it works and stuff like that. How it works, how it takes weathering and uh, etc. etc. Anyway, and without further ado, I'm gonna give it a base coat and I'm gonna be back to tell you what's our next step. Well guys, I have just completed the, the base coat using the US uh, Desert Armor 71-122 You may ask why I used it And to be honest with you, I really like it because it is a, a light sand color And uh, with the washes and stuff, I'm gonna darken it up enough so it's gonna do the trick plus I, d I just wanna do something else than the usual dark yellow I wanna see how uh, different colors react to the weathering to, to my weathering and to the washes and stuff like that so as you can probably see that the vehicle is base coated everywhere I can still open the, the lid and I have also installed the two two hatches that are in open position same thing goes for the turret and now I'm I'm getting ready for the uh, the camo application now about the camo application I wanna tell I wanna talk about it a little bit let me grab the instructions not make a mess and break anything anyway let's move this aside 
As you can probably see, instructions are not so clear about the camo, uh, uh, the camo pattern. You know, I wish every uh, these pictures was were a little bit bigger so I can better see them and understand uh, and understand its camo pattern, its its uh, color where to to apply it. Anyway, I'm gonna do my absolute best. I may do some uh, uh, freehand camo application, you know, where I cannot see how the camo is. And I'm gonna be back. Anyway, my choice of colors for the Italian olive green will be the olive green from Vallejo, 799967, uh, sorry. And for the dark brown, it's gonna go with German red brown 71 to 71. Now I'm gonna apply both of these two colors. So we are about an hour later, and I was really dumb because I forgot that the camo scheme I wanted to paint was also located in the back of the box. But luckily enough, I remembered it and followed this one, which is a, a little bit clearer. So, um, here is how our tank is looking after the first coat, the first color of camo. Okay, over here in the top, and on this side I freehand painted it as I imagined it could uh, continue there is two light coats of olive green from Vallejo and now I'm getting ready to uh, for two light coats of red uh, German red brown luckily the gun is moving because I'm uh, I keep moving it as I paint, so paint won't clog the the mechanism, if you can call it like that. I know that it is looking quite light uh, in terms of uh, colors, but trust me, it's gonna look good at the end. So, guys, another hour again. This is the third and uh, probably the last. Probably, I'm gonna explain why I say probably. This is the third and the last color of the camo scheme. Once again, freehand painted, painted on the top, and on this side, here is how it's looking. If my mobile, okay, it focused. Try to did my to do my best to apply apply it evenly evenly you know like a, like a proper camo skin i have also painted the gun barrel uh, gun metal because here is how it shows it in the in, in the in the back of the the box probably i'm going to repaint it with a darker gun metal and now what I need to do, let me grab the, the leaflet so I can show you, is one, two, and a three, and another stripe on the on the exact opposite side of white. But I'm gonna leave this. Uh, I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna return back to tell you what exactly happened. I'm gonna try to do my best because this is. A, a rectangular piece I think that it's called a rectangular you know the longer than the square part anyway I'm gonna try to do it with flat white and if I don't mess it up I'm gonna show you how exactly it came out well guys I skipped some steps ahead and did uh, enough work off camera the boring stuff you know not that my video isn't boring enough so but apart that I have managed to, as you can see, let me grab a pointer to be more specific. Here you go. 
As you can see, I have added the Pioneer uh, tools like the jack block, the jack over here, shovel, and this. Uh, oh, I cannot uh, the the level, you know, crowbar, some kind of thingy, uh, spare wheel, and this one over here. I cannot remember the name in English, and of course the exhaust. I have detailed painted stuff like. Uh, the tail light and various other things that I cannot remember right now and I have also added the, the decals now everything went smoothly decals are great but I want uh, to talk about them a little bit so if anyone grabs this kit Keep in mind in decals because uh, <clears throat> when you soak them in water, get them out and try to touch them to your surface, they stick there. Which means that you need to be extra sure where you are applying them, you know, they don't take movement uh, so well. Over here, for example, in this decal, I... I uh, positioned it wrongly and it cra it cramped uh, like a, a paper when I was trying to reposition it so luckily enough I was uh, able to uh, put it again in water and give it and uh, and give it its proper shape anyway apart that the decals are great there is a little bit silvering on them okay it, that is to be expected and now we are full ahead for weathering what i'm gonna do you ask I'm, i have no idea i have no plans for weathering i always think about uh, doing several stuff like washes streaks chips and stuff like that give me a moment guys because my cat is playing with something All right, I'm sorry. So, as I was as I was saying, I am thinking several stuff about weathering, but um, it doesn't work like this. My experience taught me that you cannot do certain steps at weathering. Okay, you can add mud, you can add chips, you can uh, do a, a, a pin wash, but it's not the same every time. And um, what I prefer to do. Uh, the at my last builds at least is to go a step go step by step do the basic stuff and move from there you know now uh, you know for example what I want to say I'm gonna apply a dark wash onto this one or a pin wash uh, whatever you want to call it I'm gonna clean it and I'm gonna see how I'm gonna proceed from there if I, if I believe that that's enough, it's gonna stay like this. If I don't believe that uh, that's enough, I'm gonna move on, do something else like a streaks. But definitely it's gonna, it, this one is getting uh, a pin wash and some chipping effects, that's for sure. Now, for the rest of it, we're gonna see. And mainly I do this because there is a silver lining in weathering and in most of the stuff but especially in weathering uh, because uh, you need to know where to stop you need to know that okay that's enough that's uh, looking really good let's stop over here because if you add a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff <clears throat> either you need to do something perfect which is not possible by my standards or either you uh, you're gonna end up with a messy looking tank like over weathered or something like that or many techniques on the mixed like slurry probably so anyway what I wanna say is that my experience taught me to go by my gut and uh, 
take a few steps back, you know, finish something, uh, finish a, a technique like a wash or chipping, lay back, look at it and consider if I want to continue or not. So guys, we have just completed the wash stage, the pin wash stage. I don't know how much of it you can see in front of the camera. Let me give you a closer look. You can see I slightly washed it. And I knocked off a track. I'm gonna fix that later. So what exactly I did, I used both washes, as I said, the Tamiya panel liner and the Hambrol dark brown wash in the, the... And how did I use them? I gave everything a, a dark wash with a panel liner, cleaned it, and then in strategic points I did some streaks here and there with the dark wash and all around the hatches to um, to accentuate the shadow with the dark brown and then I have cleaned it uh, as you can see I have left some streaks on purpose the whole process uh, darkened down the vehicle uh, quite uh, much uh, in a, uh, quite a good portion uh, Oh god, I don't know what I'm saying. So, the whole process darkened down the vehicle. That's that's what you keep. And uh, now my next stage will be to uh, do some tipping effects here and there. And of course, <laughs> glue the track that uh, has fallen off. So guys, it's been a while and I have completed the chipping uh, stage as well. I don't know how, my, uh, how much my camera can catch, but I'm gonna try to show you. Keep in mind that this tank is a tiny one and it has a three tone uh, color camo scheme applied on it. So not so many chips are gonna be visible because of that. Uh, I, have, uh, I have to admit that uh, single color tanks are way easier to chip, you know, to chip to, to do this effect because it's one color, you chip it with another darker color and it's always visible but in this case it's not so visible anyway, you get what I wanna say, hopefully uh, let's see how much I can, I can show you so, I have started from over here in the back as you can see, in the hatches that uh, give access to the interior, give, to the interior, sorry, to the engine base. Give me a moment. Okay. I have proceeded all around the hard edges of the upper hole. Let me see. Yeah, like this over here. That's an example. The, the rest of it <laughs> you won't be able to see, as I said. I have continued over here in the front on the edges of these hats and this one as well. Of course, uh, of course, and I have done the fenders on the edges as well. Hard edges are uh, prominent to chips and scratches. A little bit over here in these hats, and then I have continued to the turret. Onto the turret, of course, I have done all the edge of the turret. I have done, I have chipped uh, all the edge of the turret and of course the commander's hatch because this is uh, the most prominent hatch that the commander and gunner are getting into the tank probably, that's what I think. And that's all I'm gonna do uh, for the weathering stage right now. And why is that you have to, uh, you ask me. As I said in our first episode, I don't know uh, how much of you guys remembered it, I wanna make a small uh, base for this tank with, um, to be honest, I want to replicate the photo that you see in the intro, 
with this tank uh, crossing uh, the dirt road. So I will first need to uh, create the base with the dirt road and then attach uh, the tank onto it and apply some dust effects so the tank can match the base you know uh, to integrate the vehicle onto the base so uh, that's gonna conclude the the, the tank assembly <coughs> so far hopefully on the next episode i'm gonna work onto the base and we're gonna finish with this build in general hopefully if I um, if I will be able to um, finish the base in one episode, so that's all for this episode, guys. I hope you find this uh, helpful and interesting, and stick along for the next one, of course. Before I go, I wanna thank each and every one of you guys that watched this video. A special thank you to all of my subscribers, new and old. You guys are the best, and you are the reason I keep doing these videos. For the newcomers out there that first time encountered my video, welcome guys. I hope that you like what I do. If so, you all know what to do. Leave a like, comment with your thoughts and opinions or questions, share the video if you believe that, this, that it deserves to be shared, or even consider subscribing for more builds to come your way. Until the next time fellow modelers and friends, take care and model on. It was that Mofo Damon signing out.